what started happening politically in the U.S. pissed us off so much and we were feeling targeted and we were feeling cornered as a community that we began to write songs about it. There's no such thing as punk, I think, in Pilsen. I mean, where I grew up, there was nothing like that at all. Being a young person in Pilsen at that time pretty much meant that you were on your own. You always had gangbangers around, and they always had their arms open for any kid, right? But if you weren't into that or didn't want to be a part of that, you pretty much had to come up with things to do on your own. When I was in fifth grade, I went um, to New York with my family as kind of like a vacation to visit some cousins. I remember flipping through their records and finding, you know, Clash album, Ramones, The Runaways, The Sex Pistols album, stuff like that. And my cousin had pictures of, you know, punks and stuff. And I was like, I want to get into that someday. <laughs> Around the same time that I went to New York in the late 70s, there was a scene that was also going on in Los Angeles that had a lot of Latinos and Chicanos who were involved. In 1976, if you had green hair, you know, or blue hair, or you have, you know, wearing safety pin outfits, you wouldn't fit into the mainstream of any of those scenes. The punk scene, I think, was really like a melting pot. We never went to see the Zeros thinking it's like, it's a Latino band, we just thought, they're the Zeros. How much you were willing to come away from the mainstream was more of a, it was sort of the glue that was holding everyone together. <laughs> Probably actually in East LA, I'm sorry, at this place called the Vex. And uh, we played a show there with the plugs and Los Indigos, and it was like this big, uh, kind of like an East LA type of thing where they were getting artists and musicians and trying to get them together for like this group show, and it was like artwork and it was poetry. People would read between, um, between bands, and then that was kind of like the foundation of the whole East LA the renaissance they called it. I never heard about an East LA renaissance. I didn't even hear about it until recently. I mean, I had thought there might have been some type of old East LA scene. I just wasn't really that sure about it until I started asking questions. People don't really know enough about what happened before. There was never really uh, anything that's really marked 
that people can refer to and say, oh, this is what was going on before us. It's kind of this really scattered bits and pieces of history and of, of bands or songs, but nothing that was ever, it seems like, really well documented that people could say, oh, okay, this is what happened prior to us. It was around 1986 when I heard for the first time of bands coming out of Latin America. I remember hearing this excellent song from an old band from Argentina. And I remember hearing this going, this is from Argentina? There was actually scenes going on in Latin America, which for me made a connection because of where we're from. And I started saying, this is amazing. And it had this urgency and this, I mean, it was pissed. This music that was coming out of countries like Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Argentina, and here me and my family were from Uruguay, um, a country that you know went through an era of military repression, just like many of these other countries in Latin America. And hearing these songs and these words that these bands were singing, they were singing against those military dictatorships. They were singing against poverty and all these issues. And for the first time that I can remember, I started thinking about punk in this totally new way. It wasn't this kind of like thing that I was used to seeing in Chicago where it seemed like bands were singing about things that they, they didn't have shit to do with, you know? I mean, they were talking about anti-war stuff when, you know, they're living in some cushy-ass suburb. <laughs> what the fuck do you know about war? In Latin America, they're singing about poverty because they are poor. It's, and it's a totally, totally different situation, and it comes off as being a lot more sincere and honest, totally honest. Being involved in the hardcore community or scene, whatever, um, I always felt like, you know, there was a lot of stuff missing that I couldn't, you know, either I couldn't relate to or some other people couldn't relate to me. I felt like an outsider everywhere, whether it be in school, or in punk rock, or even the Chicano movement. People in the punk music scene are, are notorious for saying racism sucks, but when it comes down to having friends of color, it's cool until they open their big mouths. There's like desirable people of color, and then there are like undesirable people of color, and it's like you're too brown or you're too down, then you're gonna like piss somebody off or you're gonna make somebody feel uncomfortable. <laughs>
Bueno, ¿por qué ese sonido? Porque también es una forma de, de salir de lo, de lo habitual, de lo cotidiano. Porque es una forma de, de mostrar ese coraje, esa rabia que el sistema nos ha, nos ha metido en una forma como a escondidas. Tal vez la sociedad no lo siente así, pero yo lo siento porque lo, 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 lo vivo y digo, bueno, pero ¿por qué, voy, ¿por qué voy a estar aceptando esto si no es justo? No, es, no, 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 no puede ser posible que yo esté trabajando 50 horas por, por 5 dólares. Chicano Latino, kids en punk rock, like, we also have to deal with our families and other things in our communities that might not affect other kids in the punk community. Every day we walk down the street or every day we see our, our aunts or our uncles working in fucked up jobs, you know. So those types of bands for me are really important because they bring those things out. They bring those issues out that normally a lot of punk bands don't talk about. decided to do my band I said I want to put what is our experience because I don't come from Schaumburg you know what I'm saying I was living in Pilsen so I just wanted to write songs with my band that was about what we were dealing with and we made a conscious decision to sing in Spanish because all our lives we've been told you can't do this or you shouldn't do this and we said fuck it you know we're gonna do it and we did I was excited by your music you know really excited by it why <laughs> Well, you know, the things you were saying, you know, you don't hear those in mainstream bands and sure punk bands say them, but not in Spanish. And when you do it in Spanish, you're getting some ears, you know, pricking up some ears that wouldn't have been turning before. But it's not simply talking in Spanish, you're targeting them. And um, Latinos and Spanish speaking people are used to being targeted in other ways, whether it be violence, exploitation, or as a demographic for marketing, marketing groups, right? But when you target them, when you target the Latino community to um, have, a, have a conversation with them, to guess what, you're not alone, you know? We're not usually welcome anywhere, you know, even in your own community. Who's shooting who, right? Or where are you really welcome? Where are you really welcome, you know? Algunas letras, por ejemplo, el grupo que se llama Contraataque de Los Ángeles, cantan muchas, bueno, sus letras son principalmente de los inmigrantes, indocumentados, y, y, y o sea, eh, cantan como historias ¿no? de, de las personas, eh, los problemas que tienen para pasar la frontera, a los problemas que te enfrentas ya estando aquí, y sí me siento identificada un poco. Esa música, su, su volumen, todo su... Todo el ruido que sale de ahí no es nada más ruido, sino es todo un sentimiento que está saliendo y que está tratando de, de llegar a, a, pues a esa demás comunidad. happening in the West Coast with Proposition 187, the NAFTA, what started happening in Mexico with the uprising of the Zapatista movement. I mean, and just the general like xenophobia that was existing in the U.S. in whatever city you were coming from, because it wasn't just a West Coast thing, it was in Texas, it was in the Midwest, wherever you were going, we were being faced with these issues. And all of a sudden, 
there was a lot to sing about, a lot to write about, a lot to talk about. Here they were, these um, kids singing in Spanish in San Diego or all these places where people are like fearing the, of the brown invasion of like all these immigrants coming in. And like here these kids were not only singing radical politics and saying things that affected their community, but they were doing it in Spanish. and the lyrics are powerful, but where I feel the strength of the movement comes from is this kind of collective effort where we're channeling all our energies into the communities we come from. We have an enormous um, world. It's a universal um, network that exists. And it's the DIY network, which is the most powerful thing that has come out of punk. I think ever, and I don't know of any other music scene or genre that runs the way we do it. It means having control, total control of what it is you do, what it is you write, how you want to write it, how you want to put it out there and distribute it, releasing our own records, making our own shirts, anything. I mean, everything is DIY, even down to the the way that we book our shows, we don't run in a club circuit. We don't run through promoters. I mean, it's all done on the bands under our terms and, uh, and just on our own. It prevents people with other interests, monetary interests, to come in and strip down, water down, co-opt what we're doing, taking the anger and the pissed offness away from us. And it works. Tratas de expandir la definición, tratas de controlar tu vida en una sociedad donde estás completamente controlado por la sociedad, controlado por el, el sistema económico y político en que vives y tratas de hacerlo tú mismo, ¿no? tratas de, 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 de tratar de controlar tu vida. That's why we said to do the DIY, uh, uh, you're, you're being self-sufficient and, and, and having your own direction and control. Uh, and I think uh, what we're fighting in society is how we don't have that type of control over uh, uh, directions of our lives, where it's going to, why it seems more like someone else has control of how we're brought up and raised and, and, uh, and why, uh, you know, there's these class systems and racisms and all these other things. That's probably the best way to fight back to me, just throwing them in their fucking faces, you know, just be like, look, motherfuckers, I don't need you. Simple as that. basically dismantled this bullshit rock and roll concept um, where in this scene of ours there are no rock stars, there are no barricades and there are no bouncers demonstrating that separation between who is the band and you know who is the crowd. Um, that basically has been collapsed.
shows for a lot of the Latino bands started becoming sort of like a spoken word. It wasn't just like, you know, the bands getting up there and rocking out. It was more about um, talking and having this kind of dialogue with people. And sometimes the crowd would get into it. And the shows almost started becoming like this open forum to discuss. Which is why we wrote this song, That's Right Motherfuckers, We Are That Spit Band, is because there were people who involved in, so in this music scene or whatever referred to Los Crudos as the spit band. Oh yeah, a spit band. Oh yeah, but Martin's cool. No. That's, that's what was said. Oh yeah, that's spit band. But Martin's a cool guy. No, fuck you. I'm not a cool guy. Uh, you refer to me as a spit, and you refer to person that tells those type of jokes, you are a the part of the problem. Okay, but it also lets us know that what we've been doing for so many years is right. Okay? And it's like, I, or anybody in this band, ever since we started this band, and the kids that have been coming to see us from this neighborhood since we started this band, none of us, none of us feel less than anybody else. The way we were born, the language we speak, the foods we eat, what we're about, about our history, about our families, there's no shame. So things like that piss us off so bad. Uh, this song, I wanted to write it so bad when I got it down. It's like we're doing this song, this guy's it's English. And I want all the gringos to understand <laughs> what we're saying. Because uh, it's really frustrating. And um, it's a canción lo dedico a toda la gente de este barrio, de nuestros amigos, de nuestros compas. stuff that is really important to us and we need to build a whole culture of resistance and punk rock to me and hardcore is part of that. me and I think what's important for, for Latinos and Chicanos is that we got to remember that even when um, like salsa music in New York City is, is, a, is used as a political tool or, or punk rock in, in our communities or hip-hop in, in, in the inner cities, wherever it is, those movements of art and culture have to be tied into larger political action groups and that's what I think saved me in being involved in, in um, immigrant rights groups and being involved with Chicano groups. Um, that's what keeps me going. I'm not as caught up in the, the punk community or the idea of the punk community uh, as, as far as I'm with the reality of, of the community I'm in. And so the community for me is, is, is a Mexican-American, Latino community in uh, Chicago and, and in the U.S. And then uh, also then with that, then I start thinking about, uh, you know, uh, solidarity with other types of, uh, you know, people within this country that have gone through bullshit. It was really important for us to reach the community because we're all living together and might as well work together. That's why I felt that we should reach them in a way where uh, they can trust us and, uh, and there will be no barriers because it seems like in the punk scene there's too many. For us, being punk didn't mean letting go of these ties that we had to, to our parents or to our family or to where we're from or to our language. It didn't mean breaking away from that. It meant working with them to try to get somewhere, to get to a new level.
one of the ob objectives of Los Cruzos is that we would hope that other young kids would start to sing about things and to start to have and give themselves that voice, that ability to start speaking out. And I've recently been finding new bands forming in person and in Chicago. It's kids, 16, 17 year old kids picking up guitars and, and instruments and just you know, letting loose and venting, you know, and getting all that out there.